Welcome to ASU's University Academic Success Programs. This video will cover the topic, Coulomb's Law, Electric Field, and Electrostatics. Coulomb's Law, we learn, can solve for the static electric force, attractive or repulsive, between two charged particles. If the signs of the charges of both particles are the same, then the force is repulsive, meaning that they are pushing each other away. If the signs are opposite, then the force is attractive, meaning that they are moving toward each other. This is really where we get the phrase, opposites attract. The scalar form of Coulomb's law is F equals K times Q1 times Q2 over R squared, where F is the electric force in newtons, K is Coulomb's constant and is approximately equal to 8.99 times 10 to the 9th newton meters squared per Coulomb squared. Q1 and Q2 are the magnitudes in Coulombs of the two charges and r is the distance in meters between the two particles. If one charge is positive and the other is negative, when we multiply them, does that mean we will have a negative force? Good thought. Remember that I said we take the magnitudes, or absolute values, of the two charges. So they are always positive. Right now, we only use the signs to know whether the force is attractive or repulsive. For example, let's say we have two particles, 0 0.05 meters apart. One particle has charge positive 5.0 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs, and the other particle has charge positive 3.0 times 10 to the negative 9th coulombs. We can substitute these numbers into Coulomb's law to find the repulsive force between the two particles. Force repulsive equals 8.99 times 10 to the 9th for K, times the magnitude 5.0 times 10 to the negative 6 for Q1, times the magnitude 3.0 times 10 to the 9th for Q2, all divided by 0 0.05 squared for R. After performing this calculation, we find a repulsive force of 0 0.054 newtons. Now let's talk about electric field. An electric field is a region around a particle in which an electric force would be exerted on other particles. Do you know what direction the electric field goes from a particle depending on what the particle's charge is? On a positively charged particle, the electric field is pointed radially outwards, and on a negatively charged particle, the electric field is pointed radially inwards. Very good. Now the magnitude of the electric field is derived from Coulomb's law. E equals K times Q over R squared, where K is Coulomb's constant, Q is the charge of the particle surrounded by the electric field, and R is the distance between the particle and the location where the electric field is desired to be found. For example, the electric field of a particle is strongest close to the particle, and it gets weaker as the distance from it increases, eventually going to zero at large distances. From electric field and Coulomb's law, we now have another formula for electric force. F equals QE, where Q is the charge of a particle in question, and E is the electric field that the particle in question is subject to. This calculates an electric force acting on the particle in question. It is good to note that the E in this equation is coming from a different charged particle. Substitute the electric field formula in for E here, and we will once again see Coulomb's law, where we have K times the magnitudes of two different charges divided by R squared. Let's now do an example of electrostatics. With electrostatics, we are analyzing objects in static equilibrium in which electric forces are used. In this problem, there will be common forces in mechanics, such as gravity, and there will also be electric forces. Two identical charges, and we'll assume they're both positive, both have mass m equals 1.0 times 10 to the negative 6 kilograms, and they are at rest on the surface of a hemispherical bowl of radius r equals 0.25 meters. Three forces act on each particle, the normal force, the weight force, and the repulsive force they exert on each other. The normal force acting on either charge, caused by the surface of the bull, is at a 60 degree angle to the horizontal. Find the charge on each particle. And we'll say the charge that we're finding is called Q. So we're finding Q. Let's now draw free body diagrams, one for the left particle and one for the right particle. Now, because these particles are symmetrical, they have the same weight, and they have the same charge, we can focus on just one free body diagram to solve for everything we need. Based on the given information, what forces are on these diagrams? So there is the weight force mg pointing downward. 
Then there is the normal force perpendicular to the surface of the hemisphere pointing at 60 degree angle to the horizontal. And there is an electric force, it says repulsive. Does that mean it's pointing to the left on the left side and pointing to the right on the right side because they are pushing each other away? Yes, perfect. And just to clarify, I named normal force capital N and the repulsive force Fe, standing for force electric. These are all the forces acting on the particle. If we are going to find Q, we know that Q can be found through Coulomb's law. We also can see that we can use the horizontal component of the normal force in an equation to find Q. Before we can do that, we first have to find the normal force. Here we will now focus only on the left free body diagram. Let's break the normal force into a horizontal and a vertical component. We'll call the horizontal component Nx and the y component Ny. Using trigonometric ratios, we can see that the vertical component is Ny equals N times sine of 60 degrees, and the horizontal component Nx equals N times cosine of 60 degrees. For our first part, we will find N, and to do so, we will do a sum of forces in the y direction equal to zero, because this problem is in static equilibrium. Our sum of y direction forces is n sine of 60 degrees minus mg equals 0. Add mg to both sides and divide both sides by sine of 60 degrees to find n equals mg divided by sine of 60 degrees. Now substitute in the given numbers 1.0 times 10 to the negative 6 for m, 9.81 for g, which is the acceleration due to gravity, all divided by sine of 60 degrees. After performing this calculation, we find that n equals 11.3 times 10 to the negative 6 newtons. Now we will do a sum of forces in the x direction, which we will use to solve for q. Sum of forces is n cosine of 60 degrees minus Fe equals 0. Add Fe to both sides to find Fe equals n cosine of 60 degrees. From Coulomb's law, we know that Fe equals k times q times q over r squared, so we can substitute that into the equation. Remember that these two q's are equal. Now we can multiply both sides by r squared and divide both sides by k to find q squared equals n cosine of 60 degrees times r squared all divided by k. Take the square root of both sides to find Q equals the square root of n cosine of 60 degrees times r squared divided by k. Now we must substitute everything into the equation to find Q, but we still don't know r, the distance between the two particles, so let's find that. We are given in the problem that the radius of the hemisphere is 0.25 meters, and there is a 60 degree angle between the normal line and the horizontal. If we draw a line from the center point of the hemisphere to the line between the two particles, we see right triangles formed on each side. From our knowledge of trigonometric ratios, we can see that the bottom leg of the right triangle on the left is 0.25 times cosine of 60 degrees. It is the same on the right side, so this means that r equals 2 times 0.25 times cosine of 60 degrees. And after calculating this, we find r equals 0.25 meters which we can now substitute into our equation for q. q equals the square root of 11.3 times 10 to the negative 6 times cosine of 60 degrees times 0.25 squared divided by 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. After entering all these numbers and finding the square root, we find q is approximately equal to 8.87 times 10 to the negative ninth coulombs. This is our final answer. Alright, so to recap, Coulomb's law is used to calculate the static electric force between two charged particles. Every charged particle produces an electric field that starts strong close to the particle and gets weaker as distance increases from the particle. We can use these laws in statics if we know that there are electric forces present. Very good summary. You are now ready to apply Coulomb's law, electric field, and electrostatics.